Tonight on The Five Show, a story about a student driven to the brink by stress. Also, the alarming news of diabetes taking hold among young Singaporeans. Is our local hawk affair to be blamed? But it's not all doom and gloom. We found out if laughter is really the best medicine. Coming up on The Five Show. Everyone, I'm Enlai. And I'm Yasmin. Now, over the weekend, local singer Taufik Batista, he got married. I know. Congratulations. <laughs> he married Sheena Akbal. Yeah. And um, the happy couple got engaged last year, you know. Yeah. He apparently proposed to her. And uh, she thought that it was a new single, but it's not. It was actually a song he wrote for her. Pretty amazing. Just for her to propose to her. Wow. Oh. But actually, on a more serious note, you know. Yes, mm. I'm sure you've heard about the uh, A-star scholar who allegedly poisoned her Stanford classmates yeah and I according did. to reports she was experiencing stress in school yeah now we know that stress in school is prevalent and apparently china has the highest level of stress in school according to an international survey done in 2014. of course going to school will be stressful at all time at mm -hmm. some times but some students cope with stress better than others mm. and actually with stress some do really well so while a handful also crumble under the pressure and if you're a parent our first story will shock you. We met up with a 14-year-old girl who was so stressed out that she feels like giving up on life. Let's have a look. Since I started secondary three, I felt like I wasn't able to cope with my studies. I've talked to school counsellors and I've talked to my parents, but there's just so much that anyone can do, I suppose, because it's it's uniform for everyone and have got friends from other schools who are able to cope fine but then there are some that aren't able to cope so i think it's not specific to my school i usually wake up at 5 30 and i don't get to eat breakfast because i live quite far away from school so i usually take about an hour to get there and then when I get there, I've got um, regular meetings from, from the student council. And after that, I just go through the lessons from about 7.30 all the way to 2, with only a half an hour break in between. Then I've got extra lessons, and after the extra lessons, I've got CCA. So by the time I get home, it's about 7.00. Plus, I have to eat dinner really quickly and then go and have a shower. By the time I'm done with that, it's probably 8 o'clock. And from 8 to, let's say, about 12, I'm doing my homework. And aside from that, I've got tasks from student council and tasks from CCA. And it's just overwhelming. Because I have a leadership position, there's a certain picture that the teachers paint of you and your friends paint of you too. And I feel like I can't show how much pressure I am under. Honestly, I just feel like giving up on life and just shutting myself in a room and never coming out. Wow, giving up on life, that is pretty serious. Now mm -hmm. here with us tonight is a psychotherapist who has been practicing for 13 years and a counsellor who has worked with troubled teens for more than a decade. Please welcome Miss Eugenia Garjado. Hello, thank you so Hi, much for coming on the show. Hi. Welcome. You know, the girl in the video said that she feels like giving up and shutting mm -hmm. herself from the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you work with many teens who have that same emotion? Well, I wouldn't say many. Yeah, that's a fairly extreme but yes, there are some, yes, there are some that arrive to that traffic, tragic, it's a tragic, a tragic situation to feel that mm -hmm. there is not Such much despair. way out oh, for right. them. Such despair. Are, are girls yes. more susceptible to this than boys? I'm afraid so, yeah. Boys are uh, 
in general, because it's huge generalization, but yeah, they can be more resilient. They kind of take push down a little bit more. Uh, but the thing with the boys is that may come out when they're a little bit older and it also can explode. Oh, wow. So, well, um, are there any preventive measures that we can take, sort of stress relieving techniques? Yes, of course. I mean, it would be very important for a young girl like that to, to do a number of things. I mean, number one thing would be really for her parents, her school, to, and for her to help her prioritize because obviously she's in a leadership position. She's got a number of things in her plate, a lot. She, 5.30 in the morning, she's up and going to school without breakfast. So to prioritize, what is it that she needs to keep? What is it that she needs to let go? That's number one. Number two is to learn to manage her stress. And to manage her stress, there are various things she can do. Is learn breathing techniques, pranayam, which is uh, techniques that will help her to detoxify, will help her to balance and stabilize parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, to invigorate, invigorate her, to help her to calm her down and to help her to think more clearly. And then uh, things that would, laughter yoga was behind with Yvonne, which you're going to see her later. I mean, it would be wonderful for young people to learn laughter yoga, you know, to learn how to release this tension that builds up over time, over time, until they come to a time of despair. You know, a, a, a young girl, a young person should not come to a time of despair. You know, it, it should be prevented. It, right. That. Mm that human being need to learn how not to get there. Right, but what about the situation at home? Say, you know, as a parent, right? Um, some children may feel that they don't want to tell their parents because they feel they'll trouble their parents. Mm. Is, is that how these things come about? Yeah, this is, that, that is a very challenging question because the reality is that if the children cannot tell their parents that as a psychotherapist, tell me already that there is communication issue with the parents that have been breathing for quite some time. And then as a teenager, they don't find that ability to mm -hmm. communicate. It could be for a number of reasons. So parents, you know, don't go to daddy or mommy school, but we should have mommies and daddy yeah, schools, actually, you know? Yeah. You know, because our own parents, if they didn't know themselves how to deal with it, they cannot teach it to us, and then we cannot teach it to our children. So parents could also learn, and that's where we exist, psychotherapists and counselors, how to deal with young children, how to deal with a teenager, how to handle this situation, how to be able, even if those channels with the teenager have closed up, mm. how to help a teenager to open up with us. You know, okay. I'm also a mother, you know, and, and and I haven't known this since I was a parent. Right. I had so, to learn. So parents will have to, I mean, it's, it's good. You, you have to go out there to learn techniques, yes. to, to go for seminars, and don't be shy because you might feel that, oh, I should know as a parent, but you don't. No, why oh, should right. you know? Who okay. said you should know? Okay, no. well, th thank you very much for sharing yes. this with us uh, today. And uh, coming up in just a bit, we're going to explore another serious issue affecting Singaporeans, diabetes. More and more young people are getting it, and we find out why. Also, remember to like our Facebook page where you can get updates on our show and stand a chance to win cool prizes. But right now, it's News 5 at 9 with Jill Newbronner. Many thanks, guys. On News 5, a new survey shows that younger men are twice as likely to get divorced as their older peers. We'll look at key findings and just how stable marriages in Singapore are and how prices of leasehold private property may actually be proving more stable than freehold private uh, property. Uh, find out next on the news. is a mission called the People's Picture Project that would like everyone to participate in if they can. Now, if you have an original photo that you took with the late Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, email it to us. Now, be sure to include your name, the year the photo was taken, of course, the occasion. Do read the terms and conditions on our Facebook page first before submitting, and we look forward to your pictures. Mm. Now, in a recent two-year study, findings, and like at this, findings showed that three out of ten Singaporeans have diabetes before turning 40. That, that's huge. And we also have
have the highest proportion of younger, pa younger diabetic patients compared to nine other Asian countries. So does this mean Singapore has to do some drastic cutback on our dessert menu? <gasps> No chendo. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to nip the question in the bud right now. Here with us from Mount Elizabeth Novena Hospital is Dr. Ben Ng. Hello, Dr. Ng. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So first of all, let's address it. Um, younger people are getting, more younger people are getting type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. I think we have a little chart we're going to pull up right now. Mm -hmm. From 2004 to 2010, you saw an increase of 83% of younger people getting type 2 diabetes. This is quite an alarming rate. What's going on? What, what's causing this? I think there are many factors that are actually causing the rise in diabetes and I don't think it's possible to pinpoint on one in particular. But without a doubt, I think lifestyle has a lot to do with it. And I think the main problem, well, let's face it, Singapore is a food hub. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of food about hawker food and different varieties of food that you have. And I think there's one huge factor, it's so easily available then people don't hardly walk anymore, public transport is very good, sedentary lifestyle with computer games and so forth. So I think lifestyle is a huge factor that's actually causing this rise in diabetes. Okay. Right, so if you're lazy and greedy, um... <laughs> Okay, but how do you know you've got diabetes? What are the symptoms? I think the biggest problem we have is that simply that diabetes has no symptoms at all. Oh gosh. Okay. And when you start getting symptoms like what you see in the internet where you start losing weight, uh, you start drinking a lot of water, peeing a lot and so forth, you're really at a very advanced stage of diabetes. And oh. that's the big problem that you have. But there are some that are more at risk. Absolutely. I think it's very, very important to know that there are risk factors. And the Ministry of Health is very clear on these risk factors. Mm -hmm. If your family history of someone with diabetes, your father, your mother, your sister has diabetes, <coughs> you have a poor diet, you're overweight, uh, you're more than 40, you're inactive. All of these are risk factors that put you at greater risk of developing diabetes in the future. So, so how can we reduce mm. the risk? I think it's very, very important that lifestyle and diet have a very, very huge impact on, on diabetes or developing diabetes. You can't uh, always prevent it completely, but you can certainly delay it down. And I think it's very, very important that if you uh, keep active, you control your weight, eat healthy foods, try to, uh, to choose less sugar. Uh, if you smoke, try to quit. You exercise and exercise regularly. I know the recommendations say 150 minutes a week. I appreciate that's very, very hard to do. But any form of exercise that you can do is very helpful. And more importantly, because you can't always prevent it, get yourself checked regularly. Okay. okay. Well, you know, it's okay. So far, we've been talking about type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. What other types are there? I think it's very clear that there are three types of diabetes. The first type of diabetes is type 1 diabetes. Simply put, it's a condition in the younger people and you don't have any insulin at all. These people have no insulin and you need insulin to live and these people oh need dear. to inject okay. insulin. In type 2 diabetes, it's a condition where you do have insulin, however, it's just insufficient. You don't have enough insulin to maintain your blood sugar levels. And that's type 2 diabetes, gestational diabetes, the diabetes that happens in pregnant ladies and that's a condition where because of physiological changes in pregnancy it puts you at risk and gets your sugars up and that results in diabetes. You know there's a question that me and Ali were talking earlier mm -hmm. on. There's this, I don't know whether it's a myth or not that if you, if you pee and it attracts ants then that means you have diabetes. Is this true or is this nonsense? Well, I think there's an element of truth in it simply because whenever your blood sugars reach a certain level and you don't have enough insulin, your body is only uh, one other way of getting rid of the sugar and it's pass it down the urine. Okay. So if you pass out, uh, it's not the best test in the world, okay? <laughs> but but the ants are attracted to it. Right. Yeah, well, it means that there is sugar in your urine and I would certainly get myself checked. Talking about sugar, so do we avoid desserts? Mm -hmm. If you have diabetes. Yeah, mm -hmm. or well, if, you know, if you don't want to have diabetes. Yep. I think it's very clear, I think you have to differentiate diabetes and non-diabetes. If you have, don't have diabetes, if you take your ice kachang, your ice cream and so forth, your blood sugars go up and they come down because you have enough insulin. In type, when you have diabetes, obviously the sugars go up, it takes a much longer time to come down. So to answer your question, if you don't have diabetes, don't worry, you can have that sweet, you can have that ice kachang if you want. However, you have to be aware that if you, if you con continuously do it, what will happen is your insulin will go up and it will go up and it will go up and your body becomes resistant to it and oh. you develop diabetes. But it's a long-term thing. Okay, so in moderation. Absolutely. Well, in diabetes, it's a different thing. You have to eat less. Okay, okay. I well. see. Okay, well, thank you so much, Dr. Ng, for sharing with us. And hopefully... Uh, you know, we'll, and we'll exercise more. You know, but diabetes is really no laughing matter. And coming up, we're going to show you something that you can actually laugh about. Uh, finally, in this very serious episode yeah. that we have tonight. You know, also check out the Five Show's YouTube page for um, exclusive Five Show content. Um, we'll be right back. Five show. And like, how do you usually release 
remove stress? Well, um, I will pop in a DVD of Little Britain and I'll just laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. She does a really brilliant idea. I should try it out. Anyway, laughing is a great, a great stress reliever and it's been scientifically proven that laughing helps boost our health. Now, recently, I met a group of people who laugh at just about anything. I'm not kidding you. Let's have a look. Life can get pretty stressful sometimes and we all know how bad stress can be for our health. So when I heard about a new method of yoga that could help us de-stress, I just had to check it out for myself. Laughter yoga is sweeping across the USA and parts of South America, and now it's landed on our shores. Now, I was curious to find out whether it's all one big joke or if it's truly no laughing matter. Right off the bat, I was taken aback as master trainer Van Ram looked nothing like how I had pictured. No long beard, no yogi pants, no vague spiritual sayings. Instead, he struck me as a very positive, life-affirming type of person that puts everyone immediately at ease. Actually, right, we, um, we're using the benefits of laughter, okay. the proven benefits of laughter. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we found out that, oh, yoga is actually linked because of the breathing component. Okay. So then we combine the both okay. and we have a, a very unique breathing experience that actually helps us release the stale air from our body, releases stress and so much more benefits. According to him, laughter yoga was created in 1995 by Dr. Kataria, a medical practitioner in India. <laughs> Dr. Kataria was writing an article on the health benefits of laughter and what he found during his research inspired him to laugh more. He started a laughter club with four people focused on sharing jokes. The jokes quickly ran out, but the attendance grew to 50 people within two weeks. Dr. Kataria then experimented with laughing for no reason, but his wife felt that laughing constantly was too intense, so she suggested he add breathing exercises from the yoga tradition. It worked, and thus laughter yoga was born. <laughs> Laughter yoga is an exercise that combines unconditional laughter with yogic breathing. During the session, participants laugh for no reason. They do not rely on humor, jokes or comedy. Instead, they use eye contact and playful childlike actions, which usually ends up inducing real or contagious laughter. Laughter yoga is based on a scientific fact that the body cannot tell between fake or real laughter, which means you get the same physiological and psychological benefits. Now, I felt a bit silly at first doing these weird exercises in such a public space. But after a while, as I got more into it, I found myself slowly losing my inhibitions. I was a bit iffy on the forced laughter part of it, but the breathing exercises did leave me feeling more energized. While it may not have been necessarily my cup of tea, others in the group seemed to react more positively to it, judging by their smiles and laughter even after the session had ended. You know, when you share the happiness, it doubles. You know, when you share your happiness with someone else, it doubles, you know. Oh, it's good. It's good. Very good, very good. Yeah! <laughs> very good, very good, yeah! As I always say, though, you should be willing to try anything once. Who knows? Laughter yoga just might be for you. <laughs> well, here to tell us all about laughter yoga is joyologist Dr. Yvonne Louis. I love that you are a joyologist. joyologist. Yes. So, happy to be here. Okay, so what happens to our brain when we laugh? Ha 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 ha. So when we laugh, um, endorphins is released in the brain. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is it actually inhibits the pain pathway, leading you to a more relaxed, more happier mental state as well. Oh, okay. okay. What are the other benefits of laughing? Well, actually, laughter yoga, it's actually a very good cardio workout. It is a total body exercise. Really? So, in fact, 100 times of laughing, you laugh for 100 times, is equivalent to 10 minutes on the rowing machine. Wow! Which is why, you know, a lot of times after a long period of laughter, really hearty laughter, we feel so exhausted. That is true! It's actually a cardio workout. I didn't <laughs> exactly. really think of that. We don't have to go exercise. We can just I, laugh, we just laugh and laugh and laugh. Exactly. Okay, so we've got uh, uh, some, some, uh, something on the screen. Let's bring it up again. It's, it's two brain... What is this? The, the scans of brain. Uh, yes, is exactly. Yeah, so this is an electrochemical image of the brain. Um, on the left, we have it at resting. And on the right, it's, you know, after 20 minutes of exercise, you see endorphin being released in the brain. That's a lot. Oh, yes, wow. the brighter it is, the more it is. 
But hang on. Okay, this laughter yoga thing is to try and uh, stim uh, simulate laughter, is it? That's right. Yep. So what's the difference between forced laughter and natural laughter? That's right. So as you've seen in the video, our body and our mind doesn't know the difference between laughing at something really funny or laughing for no reason at all. You still reap the physiological and psychological benefits. Ooh. Wow. How about nervous laughter then? Nervous laughter is, I, I suppose you laugh because you feel like danger is upon you, but once it's but, over, you feel like a sense of relief, right? right? So that's also um, releasing, you know, feel good chemicals in your body. And, and when you're laughing, what sort of muscles do you stress other than, you know, relief? I mean, what, what muscles do you stress? What, what sort of <laughs> muscles are we working out? Wow, so it's a good question because laughter works out your whole body. It's a total whole workout. Whole bottle? Yes. Bo bottle? What is wrong with my mouth today? Whole body! You, you need to laugh more, I think. <laughs> yes, you know, your diaphragm, your respiratory tract, your abs, your legs, your back, even your facial muscles. When you laugh, your legs. Yes, because we move around and you know you okay. stretch. You do a lot of exercise, stretching and breathing as well. Facial muscles, That's but what right. about those laugh lines? <gasps> dum, dum, dum. <laughs> it's really good to stretch out your muscle because you know what? Um, a good hearty laughter actually activates up to 400 muscles of the body. So oh. it's really good to tighten and tone the muscles. And you know what they say about laugh lines, right? Only happy people have them. So if you have them, you should be proud of them. So if you're beautiful at 80, you, you're actually really unhappy. <laughs> No, I don't know. Why you ask me such things? So, anyway. Yeah, we were talking earlier in the mm. show about um, students being really stressed yep. at school. Um, how do you think laughter yoga can help them? Oh, I think it's a great... Um exercise for them. In fact, I've already done some um, laughter yoga with certain schools, um, with the students and also with the teachers as well and response has been really great. Oh, which is good because you know, if the teachers are happy as well, they're going to impart the certain vibe and feeling yes. to the kids. And of course, if the teachers endorse it, then the kids are more likely to go not poo-poo at it, right? <laughs> like, it's fun. Brilliant. I think we should all have a, laugh, a bit of laughter right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I've got nothing to say, right? I'll just. <laughs> anyway, I think thank you so much, uh, Dr. Dewey, for coming on the show and thank sharing you. with us what laughter, the power of laughter. I think we often underestimate what it can do. Yes, just I... looking at her smiling. I know, right? Smiling. I think you've made our Monday. Um, quite a lot better than what it was oh, earlier. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Anyway, that's all the time we have tonight on The Five Show. Tomorrow, we find out why younger people are getting addicted to gambling and why, honestly, we should be worried. Um, but uh, you know what? Let's laugh it all off now. Ha 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 